Hello and welcome to this episode of The Blog Chronicles. I am your host, Matthew Loomis. This show is sponsored by buildyourownblog.net, the full-service destination for people who want to start their own WordPress blog and achieve long-term success. Visit buildyourownblog.net to start your new blog today. Have you found your true calling? Do you know what your creative gifts are? Today we're going to talk about how to find yourself as a blogger, finding your voice, your authentic self, in your work and in your life. Did you know that the process of writing or blogging can help you discover your identity? That's what today's guest can help you do. He's more than just a blogger and a published author. The guy you're about to meet also coaches people like you to do all those things just listed. He helps aspiring writers find their identity and their voice. He guides bloggers to pursue their true calling. And ultimately, he has a way of helping those around him discover what it means to be human. It's time to get our chronicle on with blogger and creative coach, James Prescott. Hi, James. Welcome to the show. Hi, really great to be here. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Now, on your About Me page, or I think it's your About page, at jamesprescott.co.uk forward slash meet dash james forward slash, you say that your motivation behind everything you do is to help people do one of five things. Either discover their identity, find authenticity in their life and work, discovering and exploring their true calling, exploring and developing their creative gifts or uh, discovering what it means to be human. And I want to spend some time with you today on those points because I think a lot of beginner bloggers and a lot of new writers um, and those that have been doing it for maybe a couple of years are, Mm. are still grappling with these issues and these topics to, Mm. um, to help them become better in whatever it is that they're doing. Um, so let's start, James, with discovering uh, their identity. Now, mm. yeah, so on your blog, you talk about how to start out. Um, you started out wanting to be an author full time, and you wrote two books on encouragement, and which got things rolling for you. Mm. And you were just getting started, really, and then you were in that transition from beginner or amateur to professional. And then you realized that you didn't know yourself well enough to continue the journey. And this this slammed you into a wall that knocked out your desire to create. You lost all the fun out of blogging. And then it dawned on you, this whole time I've been writing to impress other people. Mm. Can you take us us back to that place and tell us what you did to get through that dark journey? Yeah, yeah, it was a, it was, it was an interesting time because I just, um, like you said, I'd written those two ebooks on encouragement. I launched my blog kind of professionally and started promoting stuff and started blogging regularly, and all of that was happening, and it was really exciting. And um, but it kind of, it was like something, something happened over like a six month period where I kind of started to feel like I was losing myself a little bit, and um. And my work wasn't taking off as much as I thought it would or that I'd expected it to. Mm. And it was killing me, you know. Um, I was really, really kind of depressed, upset about it all. And um, and what happened was that um, I spoke to some friends um, and they told me that, you know, your writing's not been the same for the last six months. You're, you're kind of writing to impress people. You're, um, you're not writing for yourself. Um, and I, I like, and I, when I said that, that made, made sense, you know, it like cut like a knife. Uh, and I was like, yeah, yeah, I've got to do something about this. So I made this really radical decision, which was I'm just going to stop publicly writing. I'm, I'm not going to stop publishing stuff publicly. I'm going to just go away and just write. Um, and I didn't even set a deadline on it. I said, like, just, as long as it takes, you know, hmm. for me to get in touch with my authentic creative self again you know um mm-hmm. and in terms of and in terms of identity this was like I, what i realized is like my i put my identity in what i did i put my identity on 
being a successful writer. I had put my security and my identity in like getting loads of subscribers from my blog or getting loads of readers. Um, and because I'd done that, um, well, at first it affected my motivation. It affected my motivation wasn't creating great work. It was just creating work that people would read, um, hmm. um, which isn't authentic. And, you know, um, and, uh, yeah, and it just, and, and I think all the, I think always our creative work tells the truth about where we are, even when we don't want it to. Um, so hmm. if your motivation is kind of, I'm only interested in people pleasing and making money and getting subscribers, hmm. that will come, that will come through somehow in your work, even if it's successful. Um, mm. and so, yeah, so I went away and I, I literally wrote once a day on my phone for about 15 minutes, free writing, basically whatever came out, whatever, um, was inside of me that day, no edit button, no plan, just writing every day, um, six days a week cause I had a day off to take a break. Um, like a Sabbath kind of thing every week and six days a week, I would just write whatever came out for about 10, 15 minutes. Hmm. Um, and that's what I did. And I did that for three months. And hmm. as, as that time went on, I started to realize there were lots of common themes in what I was writing um, around kind of artistic integrity and um, grounding your identity in, in something that's in who you are, not what you do. Um, and in what it means to be truly authentic creatively. And so I kind of started to, Put together some ideas and it was I'd still say now it's the most creative period of my life um, mm. I felt like you know I felt really alive because I wasn't thinking about what other people were thinking I was literally just writing for for me and what was and getting in touch with what was inside of me mm. um, and that's where I really kind of got in touch with my my voice um, where I found my voice um, and yeah found kind of found myself in the process and um, a lot of material came out of that I found like I was I had like 20, 30 blog posts. <laughs> you know, just, mm-hmm. I was just writing two or three blog posts a day. I had so much material. Um, and then mm. I had an e-book which came out of it, which I gave, well, it's still now available on my blog actually, um, called Dance of the Writer, which is about how we balance kind of the, rea- the reality of kind of marketing and promoting our work with keeping um, our authenticity and artistic integrity and being true to our own voice. And that was really successful. That just it was, it was ironic that when I wasn't really looking for success, it kind of found me a little bit. So um, hmm. um, I, when I just focused on getting in touch with my true creative voice, suddenly I was um, I was getting more people reading my work than before. Um, yeah. So when, um, so that that's kind of that's kind of that journey and how I came out of it. And eventually, I came out and started publicly blogging again. Um, but the point I did that, I actually didn't really want to. It was ironic because by the time I, I it was a, it was kind of a challenge that I, you know, you've got to go out there and do this publicly again, uh, <laughs> even though even though you don't want to. Um, so, um, but that was a much healthier place to be than where I was like the three months before that. Yeah, and we will talk more about uh, authenticity and discovering your true calling. But you said something very interesting just now about how a person can gain subscribers and followers and, and be finding success, but yet they still haven't discovered their identity. Is that what I, what you just said? Well, yeah, what I mean is that when you, when you put your security and build your identity around what you do, um, then kind of numbers, subscriber lists or how much money you make or impact or whatever become more important than the quality of the work. So, um, something, or well, for me, when I when when I did that, something died in my work. Mm-hmm. When when I when I was more concerned with what people thought and more concerned with subscriber numbers, um, something in my work suffered. Um, and when it didn't work, I was more destroyed than I should have been. You know, because mm-hmm. um, my value had come from what I from what I did rather than who I was. And the value of my work came from its impact, not from the fact that I'd made it and it was true to who I was. So, and I always, and I say this, I said this on a, I did a Facebook Live the other day and I said this, like, you, your, your, our stories have value because they're our stories and our creative work has value because we made it. Um, 
that's it. It doesn't matter if nobody ever reads it or it makes no impact on other people. Um, although those things are nice, you know, those, those things are nice. Um, it's just that's not what gives value to our work. Our, our work is valuable because we made it and because it's ours. Um, and people often stop writing because they think, well, this my work only has value if lots of people read it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that's not true. Um, um, and it kind of breaks my heart when I see people give up because they think, well, nobody's reading my stuff, so therefore it can't be that good. Because it doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter how many people read it. I mean, it shouldn't matter, you know. I mean, that's not to say that we shouldn't want success and shouldn't want lots of people reading our stuff and um, that making money and making money isn't wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, um, it's just that those things shouldn't be what motivate us. Um, they shouldn't be like our driving force. I always say that um, business is a support system for art, not the other way around. Mm-hmm. Because if we make our art our support system for our business, then it's the business that's more important. And so the art suffers. Whereas if the business and the structure is there just to support the art, then we can make the art that we want to make. Um, so, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, so James, on your blog... I saw that you share four secrets to discovering your identity. One is to accept that uh, to go forward, you need to go back first. Two, identify, or our identity, excuse me, is bigger than our purpose, mission, or achievements. Mm -hmm. Three, give this process as much time as it needs. And four, when you're most afraid to begin again is a sign that it's time. Can you um, take us through this process with a little more detail? Okay, so the first... The first step is, yeah, accepting that you to go forward, you need to go back. And that means basically stripping everything away. So um, forget the, when I, when I coach writers, what I do is, the first thing I do is like, they want to start off with, often want to start off with, um, this is what I want to do. This is what, this is what I want to write about. This is how many subscribers I want. What I, the first thing I do is like, okay, let's strip all that away. Forget about that for a moment. Let's focus on who you are and let's just strip everything back and look at who you are and why you're doing this and what's your motivation and what's your security. So um, this, this process basically involves um, examining yourself, like um, sitting down and just journaling. Like what I basically, I did every day was write out my thoughts and my feelings and uh, like the stuff that was going on inside of me, um, learning about ourselves um, mm-hmm. And getting into the ha- getting that, get into a habit of doing that, and if you just do that over a week or two weeks or whatever, or even a month um, every day, mm-hmm. you'll find stuff coming out, and um, you can you can find out more about yourself, about what you about what you really care about, about what you really want to achieve, and about who you really are. So that's the first step, um, and then once you get to that, once you've done that, you get to the second step, which is that your identity is bigger than your purpose, your mission, or your achievements. Um, because what, what, what I had done is I had tied my identity to my achievements. So how many mm. readers, how many people read my blog, how many people subscribed to my mailing list, that kind of thing. I was more concerned with that than I was about um, the, the creating great content. Um, and mm. so, well, yeah, so you let go of, uh, that and you kind of um, start believe, believing the truth that actually you already have value because you're a person. You have you already have infinite value and worth as you are, and that your work has value because it's yours. Um, and uh, actually believing that and actually realizing that and accepting that, I've seen that actually transform loads of people's writing, and they've kind of felt liberated to to write and to publish stuff because they're not so afraid um, mm-hmm. because, their ident- because they realize their identity is bigger than what they do. So, um, hmm. and then, and obviously that process takes time um, for each of us. It's different for each of us. This is the third step, giving, yeah. giving it, giving it time. Um, and it may be, for me, it was three months. For somebody else, it might be six months. For somebody else, it might be a month. You know, it might, it, it depends on who you are and, where you are in your journey mm-hmm. you know but it's worth investing the time um, because when you've done it then you'll be more in touch with your true self and you'll feel alive in a way that you didn't feel alive before 
Um, hmm. And then, and you'll get to a point, which is the, where we get to the fourth step, um, where you don't really want to put stuff out there anymore. You're kind of content. You kind of you know your own voice. You know who you are, and you kind of don't really worry about putting yourself out there anymore. But that's the time when you need to put yourself out there because that's the time when you'll you'll have your best stuff and your your truest stuff. And the stuff, and when it's more of a challenge to put yourself out there, and you're not so worried about the result, that's when you need to get out there and start showing yourself again and um, taking that step mm. because um, that's when your best work will come out mm. so that process is what I went through basically um, and it changed me and I've seen it change other people um, and I definitely recommend going through that to anybody who's especially people at the start of their journey um, who are just trying to find their voice and get going mm-hmm. uh, I think that's a really good thing to do so um, yeah and I always recommend that to people when I'm coaching them and when I'm talking to writers about about beginning their writing journey. Even writing a book as well, it's the same thing in a, in a different way. Um, so, yeah. Right. James, can you give us a couple of practical tips in relation to blogging, blogging specifically? Like, how can blogging help someone find their identity? Well, I think when you blog, I think the first thing to, yeah, the first thing is the daily, is the, is the free writing. That's the, that's, that's the, that's my number one tip for everybody, um, is, mm-hmm. uh, is to free write. Um, and you can do that. Like, set, like even just five minutes a day, mm-hmm. um, you can sit down and write. Just, and it can be in a journal. It can be on your phone. It can be on your lap. It can be like just five, find five minutes and just write without an edit button. And without really thinking about it, just write whatever, whatever comes out. And, and just get into the mm-hmm. habit of doing that each day. Okay. Um, and then if you do no other writing that day, then you've done some writing for start off. And second of all, you'll you'll be, you'll um, you'll start to find your voice. So that's that's the first thing I would I would say to to bloggers. And the second thing is to is to um, don't be a perfectionist. <laughs> okay. Um, a lot of people want everything to be perfect and want their work to be perfect before they publish it. And um, yeah. And that's. And that's a big fear for writers that their work isn't right. perfect, and you know I, that's that's something that it's kind of a, it can't, I mean I wouldn't call it an excuse, but it's something that writers use to kind of stop themselves from writing, pushing their work out. Is that it's oh it's not ready, it's not ready, it's not good, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Your work's ultimately never going to be fully ready. Um, mm-hmm. No work is ever really finished. Um, mm-hmm. Even a published book is not really finished. It's just you've just kind of released it to the world. As, you know, you've got to a point where it's ready to release and you just have to let it go mm-hmm. uh, so um and it's the same with a blog post in many ways you just have to mm-hmm. like obviously you do editing and all that kind of thing but at some point you just have to release it to the world and say okay this might not be perfect but this is it this is i need to and this needs to go out into the world right now um and so that's that's definitely one thing i would say um free writing and um don't not being perfectionist <laughs> Yeah, that fourth step of your process makes me think of the uh, you have to lose it to find it, so to speak. Mm. That's uh, right. Yeah, whether it's your life or your whatever it is, your career, your identity. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, and that, those are some uh, practical uh, ways to apply this. Uh, that's good stuff. So, James, let's, let's get into authenticity in life and work. Now, it seems to me that finding authenticity in your life and work requires one to first discover their identity. Do, is there a chicken or egg thing going on here? Or, um, or can authenticity lead us to our real identity? I think, yeah, I think there's a cycle, kind of. It's like a circle, I would say. You know those circles with the, with the arrows that point to each other? Um, mm-hmm, it's, like, right. it, it's kind of like that. Um, hmm. Because when you discover your true, if you're, if you, when you discover your true identity, then you're being authentic. And when you're being, when you when you start to be more authentic, then you discover your true identity. So, right. Um, it's um, it's a, it's a it's kind of a cycle rather than one leading to the other. I think. But I think I mean I found my true identity when I started to um, do that free writing. When I when I just started to get in touch with my true self. Right. And so in that process, I became more authentic. I, I don't like to use the word authentic too much because it's a bit jargony. But uh, I, I became more—I found my true 
creative voice, but I also found my identity. Um, mm -hmm. and, and as I discovered that, I was actually able to explore that more and then find more of my voice. So it's kind of a cycle that you, but you have to kind of take the first step, which is being willing to um, explore what your true writer's voice is. You know, getting and getting in touch with your true self, and um, that's a, that's a, mm -hmm. that's the first step that you need to take. Um, and that's, that's scary. It's challenging. It's not easy to do. Yeah. Um, but it is. Uh, it's, I mean, it's not an easy. It's not an easy process. Sometimes it can be painful as well because you get in touch with stuff inside you didn't realize was there. Right. Um, which is, but it's, but it's. I mean, but writing is therapeutic. Like creativity is a, right. a really healing therapeutic process i always find that's one of the reasons i love to write is that it gets out stuff that's inside that i didn't know was there and, get, and i get a lot of healing um yeah. and um so you so in that sense even in that sense you find your truer self you know you get in touch and you and you find out who you really are underneath right um, so it's kind of like a cycle the identity and um authenticity thing yeah i would think yeah but i agree then, it's like a circle with those arrows uh, yeah. po pointing in both directions. Um, so if, if a new blogger is thinking to themselves, that seems scary a little bit and uncomfortable. And why should I even pursue authenticity? Do I really need to do that as a blogger? What, what would you say to them? Well, I would say, I would say if you, if you, if you, if you're, if you're, I'd say if your main objective is, is making money, and that's your goal um and your big goal is to um your primary and if your primary motivator is getting people to like your work mm -hmm. um you can you can succeed in doing that um but something in you will may might die <laughs> um mm -hmm. like but um because lots of people do that and um and they're the, they're the people i don't read because they're because they might be successful, they might be making a lot of money, but there's something in, there's something that's not really true about what they do um, to me. Um, mm. But if you really want to get, if you really want to do some really fresh creative stuff, um, and you want to tell your story, because and um, whatever the result, then that's not just that won't just benefit a lot of other people because you've got a unique story that's yours and that nobody else has. Um, it will benefit. It will benefit you writing it out. So, the, so when you when you get in touch with your true self, when you're authentic, um, that's healing for you. But it's also beneficial for other people because it's you being your unique self and telling your story. Um, mm -hmm. And we all have a story to share, and it and that story can can have a positive impact on other people. And sharing that story has a positive impact on us. So, being truly authentic. Um, being in touch with your true self that's that's not just about the work it's about you and your personal growth and you becoming a better person not just a better writer so that's I would always recommend that um, mm -hmm. you know and there's I mean there's nothing wrong with writing to make money and there's nothing wrong with those kind of websites which do that um, but the ones which do that well are people who are being true and being honest um, mm -hmm. and sharing the story rather than just kind of using marketing jargon, you know, right. Um, there is a way to do marketing, which has integrity and um, I'm right. still learning that myself. Um, yeah. And it's always a challenge. I just had to, I just had to promote my book, which was challenging for me. Um, you see, I think if you, if you focus too much on the marketing numbers, money thing, then your head will get disconnected from your heart and mm. then your writing will just be from your head. It won't be from your heart. Uh, and people will notice that. Um, so mm -hmm. if you want to really create authentic, honest work and you want to do that personal growth as well, um, then you need to have a connect between your head and your heart. Mm. Yeah, that's important. It seems to me, uh, at least, to me anyway, like the topic of authenticity has made a comeback recently. Um, I've been seeing it not just in your work, but in other blogs and websites. Does mm. it seem like that to you? Yes, it does. Yeah. I, 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 and it's become, authenticity has become a jargon word now that people, it's yeah. other people say that 
Um, if you use the word authentic too much, then you're not being authentic. Um, <laughs> um, which actually, I, I completely, I, I, I kind of agree with in many ways. I try, I'm trying not to use it as much because, right? Um, because I don't want to sound like I'm talking jargon. You know, right? Um, when I say authentic, I mean being true to your true self, your yeah. true creative voice, telling your story, yeah, um, your unique story. That's 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 when I say it. That's what I mean. Um, right. I haven't even uh, used I haven't used that term in a long time, actually. Because it was beaten to death, you know, a few years ago. Yeah. And um, I think people are tired of, I think people are smarter now and they're kind of tired of the, um, like, marketing platforms and sure. people who, who claim that they're writers and, um, but actually are just marketing people who write. Um, and mm -hmm. they talk about writing, they talk a good game, but they're just, but to me, anyway, they are simply just trying to sell you something, ultimately. And sure. Uh, I, I, I was just wondering, I was just wondering out loud if there's a reason why the blogosphere seems blogosphere seems to be circling back to this term authenticity. I don't know. Yeah, and I th I think that's what I think I think the reason is 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 because they're tired of all these people, all these people marketing stuff on their blogs and right all this marketing jargon and and yeah, and building your platform and all this kind of thing. And there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with wanting to build your platform. Don't get me wrong. Um, <laughs> yeah. just, I think it's just the, it's the language that people use and it's the marketing strategies that people use and people are tired of that. Right. People, people want to hear people's true stories mm -hmm. and they want to hear something that's honest. Um, and, it's, you know, uh, and I think people feel, people feel a disconnect from, those other stuff, the, the one people who are just trying to market you stuff because there's no heart in them, you know, hmm. um, it's all kind of cold business stuff in at the end of the day, you know, right. And, and those people can try and fake being in touch with their heart. And some people are quite good at it, but at, ultimately it, they're not. And, um, one of the things I've been very conscious of in terms of launching myself as a, as, as, as someone who coaches writers is mm -hmm. that I don't want to be one of these people who is, just using marketing copy to get people to, um, or using authentic jargon to get people to pay me money because, <laughs> you know, because I, I want to help writers grow. I want to help people find their authentic voice. I want right. to help people to write the books that they want to write and to uh, to create the work they want to create and get a good writing habit. Um, and um, that's that's really what I want to do. And um, and yes, I've got to pay the bills like everybody else. You know, we all have to pay the bills. There's this, right. uh, there's this whole thing about art and money and money being a bad thing. And there's nothing wrong with making money from artistic work. There's nothing wrong with um, someone wanting to make money. It's just, like I said before, like when it's when uh, money is your motivator. Like when money right. is the thing that drives the work rather than when when your art is a support system for your business rather than the other way around you know and mm. i try to make my my business a support system for my art rather than the other way around one of the reasons i coach writers is because first i love to do it anyway um and i'd do it for free if i could um but also because i get because when i do that and i get paid it, get, it, it allows me to it supports my my writing it, it frees me to create the books and the blog posts and all of that kind of thing that i want to write yeah. um Elizabeth Gilbert says something in her book called uh, Big Magic, which is an amazing book on creativity, that hmm. um, that we should never burden our art with the responsibility of bringing our income. And hmm. um, and even she, actually, I think after Eat, Pray, Love came out, was still working at a cafe. Um, you know, um, I mean, she, she sold loads of articles to huge magazines and, you know, had like novellas which have been successful before Eat, Pray, Love, but she was still working in a cafe. Um, even though she was mm. earning more money from writing, she was still she wanted her day job to be something which wasn't writing. Um, and there's something really important about that. I, I you know, I want to, I don't want, I, I don't ever want to make my living out of writing books. I mean, you can't really make a living out of writing books anyway, unless you're kind of J.K. Rowling or <laughs> or someone like that. Yeah. But, but I don't ever want my income to be dependent on books. You know, um, mm. I, I'd like to make money from my books, and I'd like uh, my books to sell a lot of copies. But I don't want my income to depend on them. So um, that's um, yeah. So that's yeah. kind of what I think of that. Yeah. Yeah, I like I like your term uh, authentic jargon. I love that. Um, <laughs> I think I think that's a blog post right there. Um, 
Probably, yeah. <laughs> I'll have to explore that. So James, let's let's go into now uh, another thing that you do, which is ex- discovering and exploring uh, their true calling. You help people do this, writers and bloggers. What is the difference between a person's identity and their calling? Well, yeah, it's a very gray area, isn't it? Um, I think, again, I think there's this myth of, of us having only one calling. Um, mm-hmm. I think we can have a number of callings and different types of callings as well. Mm-hmm. Some callings are for a season and some callings are for a lifetime. Um, some callings, yeah, and you can have more than one. Like, um, I feel called to, well, I feel like my vocation is um, is writing. And mm-hmm. um, well, I, think that, I think that's a lifetime thing, that one. Um, the coaching thing, um, that's definitely something that I feel called to. I don't know whether that's a lifetime thing or a um, or a or a seasonal thing. It might it might it might be a lifetime thing. I I don't know. I know that I love doing it, and I know that that's something I want to do, and I feel like it's part of who I am. So, um, and then there's speaking, which is something the next thing that I want to explore, like in the medium term. Like I'm not doing that yet, but I'm just starting to get into that. So, mm-hmm. um, I don't know whether that'll be a lifetime or a seasonal thing, but. Um, mm-hmm. Those are all kind of callings, and those are all part of my identity. They're part of who I am, but they're not my whole identity. Um, and that's, I think, the difference between identity and calling is that your calling or your vocation is part of your identity, but it's not your entire identity. Um, okay. That who we are is bigger than what we do. Mm-hmm. You know? um, so what we do is part of who we are, but um, we should be able to exist without it. Um and that, you know, obviously there's transitions between different seasons of life and different callings even. And that's that's a difficult time because that's when you find out, like, who you really are, like what you really care about um, yeah. and um, what your character is. That's, you know, what kind of person do you want to be? Um, I think that's who who you are is more important than what you do. Um, mm-hmm. I think what you do is really, really important. Um, mm-hmm. It is, but I think... What kind of person am I becoming? Is a big is a is a bigger question, um, and so there is a there is a, there is definitely a connect between identity and um, calling, um, mm-hmm. but there's also a, sep- a kind of a separateness as well. Um, so yeah. I, I hope that explains that. <laughs> yeah, I think that's uh, that's really good. Uh, what are some things that a, a you know just a few practical things that a blogger could do to find their true calling? I think listen to first thing is listen to the ache. Listen to the, what what kind of what what get what would get first what would get you up in the morning? Like what would if you the what like the idea of it, like what what what, what if when when you think about it and say so that would get me up in the morning. You know, that would give mm-hmm. me joy just to get up and go and do that. Okay. Would would give me energy, it would get me going. Um the second thing I would say is what would you do if money wasn't an object? If mm-hmm. money wasn't an issue, what would you do? Like, mm-hmm. what thing would you do? Um, that's a that's really that's questions really helped me mm-hmm. uh, because like, and you can you can tailor that. You can say, what would you write about if money wasn't an object? What would you what would you write a book about if you, if you didn't if money wasn't an object or whatever? You know, uh, right. you know. So that's a good question to ask yourself on a regular mm-hmm. basis. Um, and I think also what like what makes you angry? Um, mm. What like what causes? What topics? What issues make you angry? Like mm-hmm. you know, are you angry about what's happening in like politics, or are you angry, are you angry at what, what's happening in the church? Are you angry about um, writers not being honest and authentic enough? Are you you know what is it that what is it that makes you passionate? You know what gets you right. what gets you fired up? You know, and write about that. You know, um, there's loads. There's so many different topics that are yeah. so important and that need people to. You know, if you've been, a, if your story is that you've been an addict and or you've got mental illness and you want to write about that, there's loads of people who want to hear those stories and need to hear those stories and want to be encouraged. Um, and, right. and even if you don't, I mean, you can write that and share that, 
and people would love to hear that. And if you don't share it, it doesn't matter because if you write about those kind of topics, um, that's healing for you anyway. Um, so those are the kind of things, that, questions that I would ask, like what gets you up in the morning? Um, um, what would you do if, you, if money wasn't an object? Um, so yeah. what, what gets you passionate? What gets you angry? Those kind of things. Ask yourself those kinds of questions. Yeah. And just, write, and just like do a kind of um, brainstorm and just write down things. Yeah. Uh, and you might actually surprise yourself. Um, so right. that's what I would say to people. Just from your experience as a coach and doing it yourself, do you find people have a difficult time uh, finding the calling or an easy time finding the calling? I'd say it's a, like, it's a process that works differently for different people. For some people, it is more difficult. Um, actually, the first person I coached, um, when, we, when, when I first started coaching them, they told me that they, they wanted to be kind of a mummy blogger. That's what they wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And they, they got a blog, basic blog set up, but they weren't blogging and they needed some accountability and support and all that kind of thing. So I, but what I did is I kind of took them back to the beginning. So instead mm-hmm. of thinking about the blog itself, before we got to that, we talked about who she was and what she cared about and um, what she was passionate about. And what we ended up, what actually ended up happening is that she didn't like, she ended up not doing the blog that she thought she was going to do. And she actually started a business doing something else. Hmm. Which, something that she really cared about, which she'd been trained in and just hadn't taken up, um, and uh, had a blog which went alongside that, you know. So, mm-hmm. uh, and actually, she now feels really fulfilled, really alive, and it's because because we went back to the beginning and we kind of asked those kind of questions, like, what do you care about? What are you passionate about? What gets you up in the morning? What, you know, what drives you? Kind of like, what right. kind of people do you care about the most? You know, like, what causes do you care about? Right. And when we when we did that, and we started with who who you are rather than what you do, then um, right. the person I was coaching, she found who she really was, and she's come alive in ways that she's never she never had dreamed that she would. And um, yeah. yeah, it's really and it gives me a buzz to see that happen. I love I love it. that's one of the best things about being a coach is to see mm-hmm. people who wait see what to help other people see what you you can kind of see and then actually live that out. Is, uh, it's amazing. Yeah, that's your calling, right? Is to help other people find their calling. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and that, see, that makes me come alive, like talking about it and thinking about it. It's just a, it's just a buzz, you know. So Yeah, yeah. I, can, I can hear it in your voice. James, let's now talk a little bit about um, exploring and developing their creative gifts. Uh, once again, this is sort of like the, the grains of sand in the calling, so to speak, or like the, the details of the calling. Um, how, do, how do you help people identify their creative gifts? Well, what I do with that is, um, first I ask them what they're already doing. Um, like, you know, are they, are they writing? Are they, uh, are they painting? Are they, you know, and normally it's writers that I work with. So um, normally it's more, with, in terms of creative gifts, it's more, What's your creative voice? What's what do you try to say? Mm-hmm. Um, and so, what I do is I get them to I just get them to do some brainstorming. Like um, ask, I ask get them to ask those questions that I talked about before, and we talk about it. And um, I I just get them to try and just instinctively answer some questions, like mm-hmm. um, what they care about, what gets them up in the morning, what are they passionate about. Um, and what what's their kind of main creative outlet? You know, is there is there a creative outlet that they haven't explored or that they'd like to explore? Is there something that oh I'd love to do that but I'm not doing it? Like, mm-hmm. is it like sometimes people come to me and say oh, I'd love to write a book I just never I just never thought I could do it before I just never really thought like you know that that was something I could do and it's like well you have something you want to share like you've got a story to share and then they tell me and it's like well we need to you need to write this book you have to write this book you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and and then when I start doing it, they kind of start feeling alive. It's like, wow, I'm so glad I did this, you know. <laughs> uh, so if you're, I mean, curiosity is a really good thing to listen to as well. Are you, what are you curious about doing artistically? Are you curious hmm. about drawing or painting or writing songs or writing poetry? Mm-hmm. Are you curious about writing a book? Are you, you know, like, oh, wouldn't it be nice if I did that? Or wouldn't, you know, wouldn't it be great if I did that? You know. Um, yeah. And look for the answers to those kind of questions and listen to them. Like, listen to your, 
this is another thing Elizabeth Gilbert says, listen to your curiosity, right? Um, don't be afraid of it. Um, hmm. Lean into it. And, right. um, and that's what I try to spot when I'm working with people is, like, what are they curious about? What, what do they, what's really underneath the surface? Like, my job as a coach is to, it's kind of to see stuff that's already there that they can't see and to, and to notice that, to draw that out of them mm -hmm. um, so that they can see it and then they can start to explore it. Uh, and that's what I do in kind of, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's quite a long process. It's, I'm trying to condense it down into a very short answer. But, it, but um, over, over, over a number of calls, we talk about these things and I get them to, I get them to brainstorm, I get them to um, mm. talk to me. I kind of always put them on the spot a little bit and challenge them to think about these things so that mm -hmm. uh, and confront them because um, and then actually start exploring them and taking practical steps to explore them. You know, and I give them accountability while they do that and feedback and um, and encouragement and um, and it's not simply for me about oh I want you're, you're going to kind of get a book contract or you're going to get a huge blog. But I don't like when I'm coaching people. I don't promise numbers. I don't promise. I don't promise like certain results, whatever. I just the only thing that I say to people is, if you work with me, then I will help you get in touch with your true creative voice and your true creative self, and help you to express that and yeah. get that. Um, and that's the result that I want. I mean, mm -hmm. I will help people launch a blog. I will help people write a book. Um, I love helping people write books, but I'm working with a couple of people right now, um, mm -hmm. talk, talking mm -hmm. to them about their book ideas and. We're kind of mapping out how we're going to be working together and um, taking them kind of from the kind of basic ideas to um, structuring the whole book together, mm -hmm. uh, chapter by chapter, and breaking down the chapters into into like shorter chunks so it's easier to write, and then getting them to write it, and I'll be with them through the whole process of that, um, and that's really exciting. Um, yeah. So, so it can be as advanced as that, and it can be as simple as just like what do you want to blog about, you know. Um, and or what kind of music do you want to write or you know what do you want to say in your music what's kind of at the heart of like you know why why what kind of sound do you want to do you want to do do you want to do something that's not been done before like and there's no wrong answers with creativity there's like um, people like people always kind of say oh you shouldn't do that you can't do that I shouldn't do that it's like well there's no wrong answers um, hmm. because your story and your creative voice is yours and it's unique, you know. Even if it might, even if it's like, not like one of those kind of, oh, that's really, really fresh and innovative, whatever. It's still yours, and it's still unique, you know. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of things do sound the same because we're human beings, and because human beings, you know, are similar. Um, but every story is unique, and every creative work is unique. Um, if, if it's really in touch with your true self, you know. If you're starting to think about. If you're, if you're, again, like I said, if you're motivated by, by subscriber numbers or readers or impact, then, then that, what happens is your work becomes identical to a lot of other people. It doesn't become truly authentic. That's one of the things that you lose. It's, like, it's, like, it's just like a production line. You know, it'll still be a little bit unique, but it'll be much less unique and much less mm. fresh. There'll be a less, less of a connect with people. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's, I think online, the less unique, the the worse it is, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. Or, or the less, the less impactful, the less powerful mm. it is. So James, are you saying that it's possible for someone who is like over 60 years old to discover some new creative gift that they possess that they never knew before? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, look, I mean, there's a whole load of people who, who have not really found their voice until they're older. Like, um, I, I'm trying to think of a good example. I mean, there's that if you if you if you go online, you can search this list of of famous writers and actors and and artists. Basically, who only really found their voice after four, after they became forty or fifty. You know, mm -hmm. um, I'm not. I think Samuel L. Jackson didn't make his first big movie till he was in his forties. You know, mm -hmm. um, and Morgan Freeman as well. I mean, they're actors, so they're not necessarily kind of um, they are creative people, but they're not. Uh, writers or whatever, you know. Um, but I think didn't J.K. Rowling not publish her first book till she was in her forties? I think that's. I think, I I, think so. I think you know, so. So mm -hmm. it's, it's never too late. Never too late. Um, there's and everyone's got a story to share. I mean, I'd love to. 
I'd love to hear the story of somebody who's in their 60s and all the lessons they've learned in their life. Mm-hmm. You know, that's some, that's a really powerful story, you know, right yeah. there. Um, because um, there's less, this, they, they've got lessons that, that most of us won't have learned yet. And so right. that's a really, we don't get enough of those kind of stories, actually. We don't. Because everyone's no. focused on people who are in their, like, 20s, 30s, 40s, you know, maybe right. 50s. But, like, new writers in their 60s, um, that doesn't happen very often, but it should happen. Um, yes. I think it will, and it is, I think, more so now with the internet. Yeah, I think that, well, the internet's been great because it's opened up this, this whole opportunity for people to to share their work publicly that's never been a, a, around before. Um, you know. Um, yes. Um, and, and, you know, because blogs are basically free. You can get a WordPress blog or a Tumblr blog or whatever for free. Um, and um, just set it up and um, and post something, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's, it costs nothing, um, apart from your internet connection, basically. <laughs> um, if you've got a laptop or a computer of some kind, you can an internet connection, you can do it. And that's brilliant. That, I, I, mm-hmm. I love that, you know, because it means that more people can put their work out there, which is fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. So let's now look at the final uh, aspect or point to your coaching that you do, uh, which is helping people to discover what it means to be human. And I think this is um, the most interesting or the one on the surface that might people make, make people scratch their heads and wonder, you know, how does, what does that have to do with blogging or, or writing? But uh, you say that this is your mission. So James, what does being human mean to you or how do you define being human? Let's start there. How do I find being human? I think, well, I'm a, I'm a Christian. Um, so mm-hmm. my life is built around kind of values of um, love and grace and um, inclusion and um, creativity. I mean, I, um, I was talking to somebody about this yesterday, um, that, that, an act, that faith is essentially a creative act because... Um, mm. Mm-hmm. Because when you're trusting something that's not there, um, you're having to believe that something that's not there is there. It's like that's what an artist does. When you when you're making truly honest work, you're trying to bring something into being which isn't there yet, but only you can see it. It's inside of you, and you know it's there, but nobody else can see it because you you've not brought it to life yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so there's something fundamentally like spiritual about about creativity and um creativity is something that we all do you know everything mm-hmm. whatever, whatever field of life that we're in we all are creative people and actually i mean my podcast is called poema which is the word poem with an a on the end and that mm-hmm. word is from scripture and it's the word that paul uses to describe our lives as god's masterpiece as god's work of art um mm-hmm. so um so i that, that really kind of sums up what I believe about this, that our lives are works of art that we get to create. And sometimes we create really bad ones. Like, I mean, um, I've been working through a lot of stuff from my, my own past, which included a big childhood trauma. And what I've discovered about myself is that I started to create a life um, which was not healthy because I wanted to punish myself for what happened, even though it was never my responsibility for the things that happened to me. It was all other people's responsibility. Um, I blamed myself, and so I created a life for myself where I was punishing myself. And mm. so now I need to learn to create a life where I don't do that, which is healthy. Um, mm-hmm. That's what I'm going to do right now. And um, we all, our lives are a reflection of the choices that we make. Um, mm-hmm. We don't get to choose some of the circumstances that happen to us. We don't get to choose if we, when we lose a parent. We don't, we don't get to choose if we get a, an illness or a medical condition or that kind of thing. We don't get to choose those things, but we can choose how we respond to them. And right. kind of life we've created in response to those things. Yeah. And so that's kind of what I mean about what it means to be human is um, is to find out who you really are to create the life that you believe you were made for, and actually be- and actually realizing that you have value as you are, and that you have that power to create your life, um, and, and and embracing that. You know, um, as a Christian, I do I. I would say we do that in in collaboration with God because creativity is a collaborative act. You know, mm-hmm. uh, 
every act of creativity is a collaborative act. Like even a blog post on your blog, well, somebody has to host the blog. Somebody has to design it. Somebody had to, you know, um, there's, there's a whole lot of other people. Somebody designed the picture that you put on your blog. Somebody designed the font. You know, it's a collaborative thing. Creativity is a fundamentally collaborative act. And we get to create our lives with God in collaboration with him. You know, mm. uh, and that's that's what it means to be human for me. Okay. James, do you find that those writers and bloggers who are more human tend to attract more readers or maybe have an easier time building an audience? Um, I, 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 that's how it should be. That's definitely how it should be. The mm. ones that attract me as a reader are those kind of people. Um, the ones that, that really show their humanity that, um, that, yeah, that are in, in touch with themselves, that are honest and real. I think there are people who've built huge followings who I wouldn't say that about, you know, um, because good marketing sells. <laughs> um, that's why it's good marketing. Um, but um, there are other people who have built huge followings on the back of being truly human, um, of being truly themselves. And they're the ones, I think, that last... They're the ones that stick around. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that kind of endure beyond maybe their own generation or whatever. Um, because, because what they say will always be true because it's part of the human experience. Mm. And it's something that we all connect with um, at some level. It's because, it's because it's got heart to it. We can all connect with it and it will resonate long after the person who wrote it is gone, you know. Um, if you look at all the the works of art that endure, they were all um, they were all written from the heart. You know, they all um, they've all got timeless truths about who we are as human beings, hmm. which um, which resonate. You know, the films that, that that stick, the films that people watch, are the ones which connect with something about who we are as human beings. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with writing. So. Yeah, absolutely, James. The, uh, it's been great. Uh, that you've shared uh, this process with us and uh, what you do to help bloggers and writers uh, find their identity and become more authentic and discover their calling, their creative gifts, and what it means to be human. Before we wrap up the show, um, I'd like for you to share with us uh, a little bit about your new book. It's called Mosaic of Grace, God's Beautiful Reshaping of Our Broken Lives. Mm. Um, I plan to read this book, so um, I have not read it yet, and I was wondering if you could just uh, tell us what it's all about. Yeah, yeah, Mosaic of Grace. Um, that actually came about as a result of this season because what I, the season I talked about before, um, was because what I discovered is that this whole idea that we're enough as we are um, mm -hmm. is grace. It's That's what grace is. And um, the book is a... The book kind of unpacks the whole idea of grace and talks about what grace really is and how it confronts the truth of like who we are underneath. Um, mm -hmm. And it confronts the, the truth of our brokenness and our imperfections, but also confronts the truth that we are perfectly, unconditionally loved with our imperfections. In the midst of our imperfections, we are still infinitely valuable um and that you know and ultra, and in terms of that applies to creativity in terms of our work being infinitely valuable because it's our work um but yeah i explore the kind of the truth about grace the, how it's not easy and it's not simple but actually that when we choose to receive grace and confront the truth of who we are that we can be transformed and then we can go, and we can go closer with God, and go deeper with God, and we find mm. out more about who we really are. Um, and that even though it might be challenging for us, that actually there's joy that comes as a result of that process. And that when we get, to, and then we get to share that grace with other people. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's fascinating. Where can people uh, find your book? Oh uh, yeah, you can get it on Amazon. Um, if you go there and just and just type in. Mosaic of Grace on the search thing on Amazon. It'll come up. Okay, um, I, I will have a link in the show notes to your book. 
It's got a little, it's got a red heart, bro, red broken heart on the cover. Okay. Um, so um, that's how you'll know it. And it's got, my, it's got my name on it and stuff as well. But, but yeah, so um, that's, and it's something, that's something I'm really passionate about. And it's kind of at the core of everything I do is, is, is grace, this idea of grace. Um, because I think it's like, it's the beginning of everything. It's the beginning of, grace is the beginning of every journey into mm-hmm. finding your identity. Because you have to begin with the fact that you're enough. And that's what great right. is about, about that you are enough as you are with all the true stuff about you, all the stuff about your imperfections, failures, mistakes, things that you don't, you don't want to talk about, um, and all the good things about your your worth and your value, even right. in the midst of those. Like so, when we when we come to terms with that, then that frees us to go and create the life that we want we want to live without fear. It frees us from shame, and it frees us to create the work that we want to create without fear of what the result will be because we know that we're enough and our identity is in um, who we are not what we do. Yeah. Um, grace is the beginning of, grace is actually the beginning of really true authentic creative work. Um, so yeah, yeah, it sounds great. I just added it to my reading list on Goodreads. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah, I'd love, so. love to read that. You can get that on Amazon. Um, Fantastic. Yeah. Before we go, I was just curious, do you have another couple of minutes for a bonus question? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. All right. I, I, I'm serious. I did not think to ask you this until just now, but um, the more I get to know you and what you're all about, I'm just curious. Um, this is like totally a different type of question or, you know, it doesn't necessarily relate to what we've been talking about. But it, actually, in a way, it does. No, wait, I take that back because, you know, we've been talking about authenticity and identity, true calling, creative gifts. I am just curious what you think of the the big time uh, self-help folks like Tony Robbins. I mean, hmm. the, does Tony, is Tony Robbins I, uh, authentic? Is he, you know, what's, what's your yeah, take? What's your question. take on that? I, I'm, I, to be honest, I'm a big fan of Tony Robbins, actually. I mean, I, I don't see him as, I, having listened to him tell his story, mm-hmm. and, um, and it's an amazing story. Um, mm-hmm. um, I, when I listen to him, what he says sounds true. It sounds from the heart, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I heard him tell a story about when he was, before he started out this journey, he had no money. Um, he was at a cafe. He had a limited. He had this little amount of money. Yeah, he had enough money for one meal. So mm-hmm. um, he was at a cafe, about to order his meal, and he sees this little boy come in with his mother, and opening the door for her and treating her properly and being like kind to her. And they they had hardly any money. And mm-hmm. um, he was so moved by this that he just gave this boy all his money and said, "You go and buy. You buy your your mum dinner." And this, mm. this is going to mean he wouldn't, be, he wouldn't be able to eat like the rest of the week. He didn't know where the next penny was coming from. And then he, but he did this anyway because he wanted to be generous and he wanted to, he wanted to honor what this boy had done for his mother. And when I heard, when I heard him tell that story, I really connected with him and his heart. You know, and, okay. you know when I hear about him giving like all his book advances away to help feed people, his goal of like raising billions of pounds, dollars, whatever, to, to feed orphans and to that kind of thing. You know, when, he, and when I heard his own story of how he experienced that and where that came from, that connected with me, that he has a real desire to help people, that he genuinely wants to help people grow and to um, find who they are and embrace their true identity and calling and stuff. And, I, um, and yes, right. he made, yes, he's made a lot of money, and yes... He does charge money for his work. Um, um, he does give a lot of stuff away for free as well, actually. Um, um, there's a mm-hmm. lot of free material as well. Um, but, um, but I don't think money is his motivation. Um, um, I, I, don't, I just don't see that in him. Um, mm-hmm. But I can understand why people criticize him, because he's, because he's up there in the public eye, and, he, and a lot of what he says is it can sound a bit corny sometimes, you know. Um, mm. But but I but I've certainly got a lot out of it uh, out of what he does and I yeah learned, I have too I have too in the past um, I've learned from him as a coach right uh, 
as well. Um, so um, he's not one of those people that I would say is inauthentic. I would say he's he's in touch with his heart. Okay. Um, I think. I was just curious um, because I think when when you think about coaching or when you think about um, success, he may be the first one that comes to a lot of people's minds, and so yeah. I, I was just curious what you had to say about that. It's <laughs> interesting. I nobody's ever asked me that question before, so that's really good. <laughs> All right, <laughs> like to shake things up, keep it keep it fresh here. So, James, thank you so much for coming on the Blog Chronicles today. It's been a real pleasure talking with you. Thank you for having me on. It's been so so great. And um, if you want to connect with me, I'm on. Um, yes. I'm on uh, Twitter at James Prescott seventy seven. And that's my Instagram as well. Um, and I've got a Facebook writers page. Um, and you can, yeah, I'd love to hear from people and connect with people because I do try and interact with people on social media as well. So if you tweet me or whatever, I will, I'll try and reply. So um, now, yeah, what about what what about your Facebook group? Who who should uh, be interested in that? Um, well, I have I have I have a Facebook group um, called Is Writers it closed? Together. Um, uh, well, yes, it's kind of closed because it's. It's for it's for people who sign up for my mailing list and um, and they're all, and they're generally writers. Um, okay. So, you, so when you sign up for um, my mailing list, you'll get like two. You'll get this ebook that I told you about before, the Dance of the Writer um, book, and a book on creativity, which is basically um, literally the, the the free writing I did um, during that season I talked about. Um, just edited and organized and put together as a book. Um, so it's kind of like raw. Um, mm -hmm. But it's an example of what what can happen when you start doing this free writing. That's why I wrote the book. Um, so mm -hmm. you get those free, and then you get a link to join this Facebook group uh, for writers where, I'll, where I'm, I kind of share tips, and I do Facebook Live videos there, and um, I ask, and we try and have community, and people can share their own work, and share their struggles and questions and um there's a place where you can be a safe space to be vulnerable and um for people who are starting out on that journey um whether it's whether it's they've already got a blog and they want to write a book or whether it's they, they're literally just starting blogging um they can go there and be vulnerable and ask questions and and we can i mean grow kind of grow and learn together um and mm -hmm. um, um and i also do like um every month i do a seven day writing challenge which is a which you can, which the, the, that page um, will be going live on my website soon. Okay. Uh, where you can um, sign up and um, then you'll get like daily writing prompts for the first week of the month on a certain topic, um, and um, then weekly prompts for the rest of the month. Um, okay. And that's all. All of that's free, um, and you get into the Facebook group as well when you when you sign up for that list. That's a separate list, um, but. Um, so yeah, um, that's the kind of free stuff that I do um, to help writers. Um, obviously, I've got like um, coaching as well. Um, there's a coaching page on my website, um, jamesprescott.co.uk forward slash coaching. Um, so if you go there, there's different packages that work and help mm -hmm. you out. You know, and I, you know, if you've got a book you want to write but you're not sure where to begin, I can do help people with that. If you want to launch a blog, want to find you just want to find your writing voice. Um, I'd love to help you. I do like free half-hour consultations with people. So if, if that's literally all you all you can afford or all you need or whatever, I can you know you can do that. Um, so that's all on my website. If you want to go and have a look, um, I'd love to help you out. Yeah. Fantastic, James. It's been a pleasure. Thanks again, Matt. It's been really really great doing this. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Blog Chronicles. If you enjoy the show, please subscribe on YouTube or iTunes and leave a rating or review to help other bloggers find us. If you want to chat, look me up on Twitter, at Matt Loomis. So who is going to be my next guest on the Blog Chronicles? She's a blogger who knows how to use social media to promote her website. In fact, she helps businesses do just that as a social media consultant. She is a frequent speaker at social media conferences like Social Media Marketing World as well. Join us next time and find out why Forbes has recognized my next guest to be in the top 20 of women social influencers. I'll see you next time.